Thank you so much. My name is Viv Ford, and I am head of community at Alio. Uh, speaking of ambassadors, not only are they wonderful, but they also make wonderful hires, because Nodari back there was hired as an ambassador and is now a kick-ass community manager. This is fun. Uh, it's like we're reading a book together. OK, let's talk about rebooting the internet something that we all know probably pretty well. Um, I'm going to start with a simple question. Has the internet peaked? Let's give a show of hands. Who thinks it's peaked? Wow, really? Yikes, I should leave now. Who thinks it hasn't peaked? It has yet to peak. OK, interesting. I'm not talking about the content on the internet, right? I'm not talking about like the fun YouTube videos you're watching or anything like that. I'm talking about your literal experience on the internet. When you look something up on Google and the first five results are advertisements. Or when you download an app and the first things you have to do are scroll through the privacy policy, scroll through the terms of service before you can finally use your online dating, right? Annoying. I'm a child of the 90s, which means this is what I grew up with on the internet, Neopets and MySpace. Uh, nice. I don't know which one that was to, but I'll take both. Um, the fun thing about Neopets is that for those who remember CryptoKitties in 2017, um, Neopets was basically the original CryptoKitty. CryptoKitty was an NFT project launched in 2017 on Ethereum where you could trade, buy, collect, and breed your digital cats. And a lot of people say it took inspiration from Neopets. Look at the simplicity of these logins. You have your username, you have your password, and that is it. So simple, so easy. So what the heck changed, right? Now we log in with Facebook, we log in with Google, back to the internet being a so-so experience. I'm sure a lot of you guys have the experience of your ad blocker needing to be disabled so you can actually log in with the Google pop-up. How have they not fixed that yet? So, of course, it's no surprise, right, that the rise of social media platforms created an enormous amount of user data. Your data, my data, money. What does that mean? Well, this is from Threads. This is their privacy policy. Any of you guys using Threads? Good, me neither. Because if you do, this is what you're giving up. And I use Twitter, I like things, I retweet. I'm pretty dang sure Threads doesn't need to know my health and fitness information, my sensitive info to make it a good time. They'll learn it, they'll definitely learn it, but do I need to give them access to it right away? So, your data has completely structured the internet. Even if you browse in incognito, your ISP collects and stores the data, which you really got to ask yourself. That information is out there. And if it got out, how disappointed would your parents be? <laughs> right? Facebook has a pretty good idea. If you get into a relationship with someone on Facebook, back in the days when you were in a relationship with, they'll know if your, if your relationship will last before you. The internet knows where your dog lives. That cute Instagram picture you put up of your puppy with the bone, it's so cute. But now Instagram knows where your dog lives. Facebook knows how intelligent you are, how satisfied you are with your life, and whether you are emotionally stable or not, simply based on the likes you have clicked. Would you pay to see what they think about you? I don't know. The internet is not your friend. It's the freedom on the internet has rapidly declined and in an age where more and more of our interactions are going to be increasingly digital, we have to change something. When you, oh, it's okay. When you downloaded that app, doesn't matter. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> when you downloaded that app, you probably didn't pay for it and if you did, we're all thinking you're a chump for paying. But you know what else? We're paying with our data. So if you, are, if you are not paying for the product, you yourself are the product. Your data is money. Your data is powerful. 
all right, I get it. You guys are sitting there and you're like, yeah, Viv, haven't you heard about Web3? That's what's supposed to change anything, everything. Open source principles, where you can fork something if you don't like it and make your own version of it. Decentralized control and ownership of your data. Exciting, we love that world. Web3 as it stands is a little different, right? I'd venture to guess that most of you guys are probably using Ethereum on average instead of another chain, but I could be wrong. But Ethereum is inherently public, which means that when you purchase a crypto, uh, a bored ape or a crypto punk, that's pretty cool to show people that you have one. I'm not gonna lie, I don't have any. Or when you shitcoin Pepe's on Dex, it's okay. You know, it's, it's embarrassing, but I did it too. But what about the things you don't want public? Like you don't want a public Venmo. Maybe you do, but probably not. There's actually a marketplace where you can get paid to leak someone's wallet. Sure, you can spin up another wallet, you can spin up 10 more wallets, but all of these things can still inherently trace back to you because Ethereum is inherently public. That's why it works. So Web3 as it stands, it's kind of like going to Mars these days, you know? Like I'll go to Mars when there's Uber and when there's a four-star hotel, but I won't go to Web3 until that's the case. Okay. Imagine an actually secure internet. Private by default, the user controls their data, web services don't store sensitive information, no data leaks, no threat of your information getting out there, and most importantly, the experience is not compromised. Because convenience will drive success time and time again. There's a reason most of you guys use Ethereum. The tools to use Ethereum are well done. The world is building out Ethereum, it's easy. Convenience will drive success. We need to make a private by default internet convenient for us. This is what Alia is trying to do. We're trying to build a world where your data belongs to you. Now, this has been very hypothetical. I've thrown in some fun little Mars concept to get you guys on board. But what exactly are we talking about here? We're talking about a zero knowledge proof. You guys have heard of them? Pretty fun. Zero knowledge proofs have been around since the 70s, the 1970s, don't kid yourself. And they've recently really started to become very popular with crypto, uh, uh, crypto projects. Um, for two main reasons. I'll explain zero knowledge proofs from a word level and then I'll explain it from a, an example level, but you have two parties. You have a prover, you have a verifier, you have the prover who wants to prove that they know a piece of information, but they're annoying. They don't want to say the type of information. But the verifier wants to make sure that they really do know that piece of information. So, ZKPs in practice. All right, I'm going to a bar, I have my ID. I'm from New York, has my address, has my eye color, my height, everything about that. Hand it to a bouncer, he checks it. If it's good, lets me in if I'm over 21 or 18 if we're here. With a zero knowledge proof in practice, simplified, but I have my ID, I generate a zero knowledge proof that shows that I am indeed over the age of 21. There's no extra information. They don't need to know my beautiful eye color. All they need to know is that I can then access the bar. Simple. Another example. I want to get a loan. I want to buy, um, sir, what do you want to buy? A, a Tesla. Great. OK. I want to buy a Tesla. I need a loan. So I'm going to fill out a whole bunch of information, probably a lot of it not important, like my mother's middle name. And I'm going to give this to the loan officer. The loan officer is going to say, OK, all of this information, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And then whether they 
give me the loan or not, they will still keep my data. And they may even sell your data to insurance companies or to other people interested. Zero knowledge proof. I gather all the, inf all the necessary information, which sure is you know, your income, your credit score, your employment status, these things are fair. I generate the zero knowledge proof that says whether I hit a certain metric to actually get the loan or not. And the lender verifies, acts as the verifier to confirm, yes, she can get this loan. Same outcome, very, very, very different things that happen in between. Zero knowledge proofs allow developers to build private by default applications. If we want a better Web3, a convenient, successful Web3, we need private by default applications. Zero knowledge proofs provide privacy and scalability. Okay, it's like 50% of women in here. So 50% of us get a period. Sorry men, but listen up, this is important. Okay. We have some good period apps out there. We have Clue, we have MyFlow, you got them all. They're all very into telling you that your data is safe. They've like upped their privacy policies when you go back onto their apps. They're like, check it out. Ch seriously, check it out. We're, we're safe with your data. Good to know. But the thing is, even if they promise not to sh share or sell your data, they're still likely monetizing it in some way. Because again, unless you're paying for the app, your data is the product. Even if you just delete the app, this doesn't necessarily delete all of your data. You sometimes have to send an email to the company requesting that your data be deleted, which can take upwards of two weeks for your data to be deleted from their database. What if we did a period tracking app that incorporates zero knowledge proofs on Alio. What would this look like? Well, we definitely want our data to be encrypted. We want our cycle data, our symptoms, all sensitive information to be, Tesla, don't lose me, you're doing well, <laughs> to be encrypted. Okay, we also would love to have an opt-in data sharing policy because data is powerful. You should have the power of your own data. You should be paid for the power of your own data. If you're someone who doesn't care and wants to just share all of your information, that's totally your prerogative. But we should do it in a way where users have full control. And we should add an extra element that can be done with zero knowledge proofs that essentially says, this is true within this situation, but we won't reveal anything more. So. The user's cycle was within a particular range, but we won't reveal any more information. Or certain symptoms were present, but we won't disclose the specifics. Give yourself the, the power to have your own data in your control. Let's build a secure internet. Back when I asked you, has the internet peaked? Let's build one where it's so undoubtedly certain that the internet is better. Because your experience on it is your experience what Web3 actually did want to give you. Alio opens up new opportunities for building secure, scalable applications in Web3. Thank you. Does anybody have a question? We have time for like one or two questions. Okay, yes. I'm gonna Run the mic over to you. Do, do, do. Can run in heels. That's all right. Hello. Oh yeah. Hi, um, I'm Lily, and uh, I have a very quick question. So you mentioned that. Um, you would like to build something, or that you are building something that is very different from what is already out there, so that uh, when we use an application and we're not paying for it, we are the product. So I lack a bit of imagination. <laughs> Could you tell me how Aleo sustains itself if you are not doing exactly what other applications are doing to us at the moment? Yeah, great question. 
Um, so Alio is an L1, which means that we are building from the ground up fully private. Right? If you're slapping on zero knowledge uh, roll-ups onto Ethereum, you're not getting the inherently private aspect. You're slapping on a privacy solution onto a public. So Alio thought, OK, we need to build an L1 to start from the bottom up to actual uh, fully private. So what does that mean? Alio makes money in similar ways that like Ethereum makes money or chains make money. Right? Yes, you can have a secure internet, but it likely has to be in Web3 because of this whole issue was from the bottom up private. So what's the killer ZK app? Everyone's trying to figure it out. Alio's trying to build it as well. How do you do zero knowledge within KYC? A lot of you guys, if you're community, are very aware with KYC. What an absolute nightmare, right? How do you handle people's data without necessarily risking losing their data? So a lot of it is what is the killer ZK app that will be used? Does that help answer? OK. Any other questions? No? Sweet. Thank you guys so much.